so before I start, let's raise your hand if you are familiar with embedded development. Nobody. <laughs> That's good. That's good. For, okay, cool. Uh, and anybody familiar with Android? Okay, cool. So let's start. The brief explanation. So you know Android is super popular operation system. Operating system, it's, it's in uh, smartphones, uh, like 2 billion devices. It's in the smartwatches. It's in your TV at home. It's uh, inside the cars. And uh, why not to use the same operation system inside the embedded devices? Because now in modern world, there are so many smart devices with screens or without screens, if we look at uh, out uh, outside, so we can see there is a cameras, gateways, a lot of uh, some uh, commercial usages in the industrial space. There is a like, point of sales inside the shops and the interactive ads, some smart TVs for advertisement. All of this use some kind of operation system, some of them based on Windows, some based on Linux. And uh, why not to provide developers the ability to use latest Google technologies and uh, latest Google updates? And uh, there are so many Android developers who are familiar with Android framework with all the stack of frameworks and libraries related to Android development. Why not to provide some kind of similar uh, experience, similar uh, tools that developers are familiar with to make some embedded systems uh, in the Internet of Things uh, space. So let's go from <laughs> prototype to production using Android operation system and a special form called Android Things. So what's, why is it important to use Android Things and who need to use it? So it is, as I said before, it is Android SDK. So most of the SDK is the same as regular mobile application and Android. So no need to learn it from scratch. You can use the same IDE Android Studio that is well optimized for Android development, super uh, good in terms of after filling, in terms of refactoring, in terms of uh, adding additional frameworks and tools. Uh, and the whole power of Play Services, it's a Google third party, no, it's not, it's libraries by Google that not ship together with Android operating system, but it's installable by user and uh, there's like maps, there's like uh, push notifications and uh, many other services like near being uh, communication between devices and uh, many, many, many other frameworks that helps our developer life better and uh, help to increase user experience. And the same, uh, the same I want to say about Firebase as a real-time database that shared uh, data between uh, our smartphones and uh, some remote servers. It makes it really easy to integrate and for prototyping it's super cool. I will show you on the samples. And obviously there is uh, already implemented the SDKs and uh, all the APIs that you need to use with cloud platform, so you need to integrate by yourself. There is already implemented for Android, so you can use it in Android things, same. And also one more cool thing, it's the TensorFlow, as you know and heard a lot about machine learning using TensorFlow. So all the stuff that you want to use within your trained uh, models on a, uh, small devices, you can do it. Obviously, you don't need to train on the embedded system devices, but if you have a trained model, you can use it uh, on the smartphone and on the embedded system device uh, from Internet of Things world using TensorFlow. That's super cool. And also Google Assistant. You can build your own Google Home just using Raspberry Pi super cheap $35 device. That's, that's, that's pretty incredible. I will show you some samples how to do it. It's impressive. So why, why not to use Linux or, I don't know, some other cheap open source uh, solutions for uh, for base of your devices inside it because uh, for example for users if you user and buy some uh, no-name device from Kickstarter that is some smart camera or I don't know 
smart GPS tracker of your car or something like that. Uh, you're not quite sure about that operation, operating system and uh, all the security updates will be delivered even after company will be closed. Obviously, it will not happen. But if it's Android things based device, Google will provide updates even after support by original developer will be stopped. And this is kind of cool. And developers don't need to spend their time to fix all the security issues on the custom builds of Linux or something like that, because Google will do that for them. And uh, so the security, automated security updates, uh, the silent images, there is no possibility that Android things will receive update with some crackets, some uh, vulnerable uh, application or operating system update. Uh, the verified boot uh, don't allow to third party, I don't know, some third party user to access to your device and uh, reflash it using their own uh, build and uh, ROM. Uh, so let's let's make some conclusion. Uh, in terms of other things, the coolest part is the real time updates and how it works. You as developer send to Google server your signed application and Google will uh, pack it with the latest firmware update and deliver to your device. So you don't need to deliver by yourself. And you have a pretty smart console to provide updates to your users. Uh, so let's talk about hardware. Hardware is currently support like four devices or maybe five. Most of them it's NXP based uh, chips. So. Uh, you may be familiar with the SOM system on chip architecture. So if you see this is the large board, it's like Raspberry Pi, some kind of this size. And uh, this is the breadboard for your development needs. So there's like jack output, HDMI output, a lot of pins and all this stuff. For your device, you actually sometimes don't need all these interfaces. All you need is just a couple of pins maybe, maybe one uh, uh, bus and all that you need. You don't need USB or Ethernet input. So this is the cool thing about uh, system on chip. So actually the whole CPU, GPU, RAM, uh, some connectivity models, all this hardware on a small chip in this kind of size, like super small. Yeah, this size. So all you need, this is just for debug for development breadboard and use inside it the small chip you may, may see in the middle of the uh, uh, of the top image, this system and chip. Yeah, this is that it is. And you go to manufacturer of your device and ask him to use this chip because you already tested it and Google support and provide board support uh, package for this kind of devices and you can uh, publish your new device with this breadboard. The price of these breadboards for development needs is like 200 for this kind of boards plus screen plus uh, additional sensors. Uh, I don't know what's the initial price when you go into production, maybe like 30, 50 dollars per each model. It is quite core, oh, sorry, dual core one and five gigahertz model with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and uh, this name is NXP IMX 7D. You can Google for it. Uh, if you open Android Things site, website, you will see that it's supported Raspberry Pi and a couple of NXP chips. So for start writing some basics of Android Things, you don't need to buy this kind of NXP chips. You can just grab some Raspberry Pi 3 or 3 Plus jet that was just released like two weeks ago. Uh, and you can flash Android things on it and use the same pins as uh, NXP and it will work perfectly on the boss. But as you may know, Raspberry Pi is not that good for production because there is no system on the chip, it's a huge board and it's not that stable, so better consider for production needs using NXP products. So in terms of development, in terms of development, you see this is the Android. This is a lot of different layers, a lot of different parts of framework, but most of, most of them we need inside our IoT stuff, but when we develop an IoT, we don't need some kind of launcher, phone, message and contacts. Obviously, we don't need this mechanism. We don't need runtime permissions. We don't need soft keyboard support. 
uh, notifications because there's no place for notification. If you need, we can implement ourselves, but don't need to provide like GCM Google Cloud messages and Firebase Cloud messages onto our embedded devices. So as I said, display are optional. Obviously, you can use displays and write the same views, the same UI using layouts as you do in Android development, but it's optional. And consider different um, type of interaction with your user. The good samples is smart assistants. You know, Google Home, Amazon Alexa, Apple, I forgot the name, Apple, 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 something like this. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Siri inside the, the latest uh, smart, uh, uh, I forgot, speakers, name of smart speaker. So you got it. You can you provide some different type of buttons, not the QRT keyboard, and it's also a good idea. So uh, maybe camera, if you build in some device with image recognition. So let, let's, let's look at some, like, couple of slides with the code. Uh, if you're familiar with Android, you should be feel comfortable because it's the same. Instead of main activity, you annotate IoT launcher activity that will be run right after your device will be boot up. And uh, if something goes wrong and app will crash, it will be restarted again and started automatically by system. So you can use uh, peripheral I.O. the same as any other IoT devices. So there is uh, all the interface that you need, GPIO, PWM, I2C, SPI, WART. Uh, if you're familiar with it, that's good. If you're not, you can just open the Google Android Things website for developers and there's a good explanation, each of them, and you can understand what you need for your prototype. So writing drivers, you can use the GPIO callbacks as or any OPWM callbacks, the same as you write in regular Android application, and you can do it by yourself. There is a sample when we use GPIO uh, pin to understand that user press the button or not. And we can write, or third-party developers can write user drivers. So if there is some kind of sensor, we can write a driver for this sensor and the developer of who will use this driver don't need uh, who will use this sensor or button or motor shield or maybe some other stuff, camera for example, they don't need to go to deep low level and uh, provide all this communication through SPI or WART or I2C. All these need can use the, dri uh, the driver, the same as we do on Android. There is a buttons on the phone, but we don't go to deep hardware level to understand this user press on this part of screen or this part of screen. All we need is to subscribe to callbacks like if user press OK button, we should uh, run this code. Uh, so there's three types of drivers, input drivers, sensor drivers, and GPS drivers. And uh, if the driver already provided, it will be used as uh, on the top of the screen. So we put the driver name, driver version, and uh, which key code we want to use it. And uh, it will be consumed this way. So we use it the same as regular button so we say hey is user press key code space if user press space button we can use it same as as usually and uh, if you open google android things samples list there's a lot of provided drivers by googlers and open source community for most of the sensors that people use for arduino and uh, raspberry pi prototyping so that, that's good for you. It's super simple now to start with prototyping. And we will see some samples on YouTube and Hexer.io how to use in a couple slides further. So let's briefly check what we already learned. So there is a power of Android, so you don't need to learn new framework, new tools, new libraries. You can use all the power of provided libraries by third-party developers, by Google. Uh, for Android developer world, that's pretty good. It's managed by Google, so there is a board support package that always updated, and there is automatic security updates to your devices, and that's good console. So when you register your devices, you can create list of your devices, group it, 
and uh, push updates of your app through the cloud. Pretty smart, pretty simple. Uh, one thing to note that Android Things is still in beta. It's not official published, so uh, if you're going to use it, you should consider that it's not ready to production, but it's almost on this way. So, like, we can expect in something like that, maybe on Google I.O., I don't know, but who knows, because now it's 0.7 version with most of, fits most of the needs by hardware developers. And uh, so you may ask me, why I need to buy so expensive chips for my embedded solutions if I can buy cheap MCU microcontroller unit like ASP8266 that costs like $2. Uh, and and said that you need to buy $30, $50 chip. But it's completely different use cases. So let's consider you have a fleet of thousands of ESP or any other MCUs with temperature sensors, with some motion drivers, some sensor controllers, and your your place, your maybe plant, maybe your building where you install all this stuff, not always connected to internet. So you need to provide some uh, some calculations, some analysis on flying. And how to do it? Uh, in, the, in this case, obviously you can create your own server locally, but actually this is not needed in modern world because this system on chip is enough power, enough uh, consumption uh, ability to calculate all this on this chip. So you can provide some like controller of your chip controllers in your building and this why Android Things is where it comes on the stage. So this is one of the use cases and I will provide my sample that I use at my home with this scenario. And you can aggregate process control all the data offline uh, from these thousands, maybe one, hundreds, I don't know what, what size of your fleet uh, devices and then send it. This is one scenario. Other scenario is just to build single cheap device like smart assistant and use it. But in terms of why you should not just use cheap MCUs because cheap MCUs is not, don't have enough power to provide some processing uh, calculations. And it can be sent to Google Cloud Platform or any other your web servers and uh, make some, I don't know, uh, processing. So, Real use cases. So there's a lot of uh, Google Android things announced like one year and a half ago, and uh, there's many more samples how to use it. So Google A A I Y project, it's a one of the good samples. So all you need is just Raspberry Pi, speaker, button, microphone, and all, that's all you need. And you can build your own Google Home. Yeah. Smart Assistant with button, speaker, microphone. And because of Google Assistant can be built on top of Android Things, it's super simple to make your own Google Assistant. So you can use the whole power of Google Assistant just in your prototype project. And the same, you can use all the power of TensorFlow and all the power of uh, image recognition provided by Google and trained models using Google Vision sample, there is a camera, there is a small Raspberry Pi Zero module, and uh, you can make your own, I don't know, detector of who's on your building. Or maybe, is this is your cat or not? Should the do door will be opened or not? Or maybe, is car parked on the proper lot or not? Or any other image recognition solutions. Pretty cool, pretty cheap. Uh, there's another samples all over the internet. My colleague uh, Rebecca Franks, uh, who also Android, uh, Google developer Android, uh, IoT expert, provided this kind of sample. There is like, there is a board, there is a speaker, and she play piano on several devices of Android smartphones, and they connect by nearby services, so they don't need to have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth turned on. Uh, and be in the same network 
and they communicate together and play some music using Android things. This is just a sample, so you can create your hardware wallet if you want, why not? It's so popular in modern world to make your wallets with cryptocurrencies. Uh, there is a Braille box. It's one of the coolest uh, samples of usage. So people cannot, some, some people are blind and cannot uh, read texts. So this solution read them using Braille alphabet. And uh, this device can read the news and sh show them so they can feel what's, what, what's happening in the world. Uh, you can build your own robots using Android things. There's a lot of samples on GitHub, Hacks.io, Instructables, and other, other popular DAI websites. How to build your own robot that can be controlled by controller, or maybe that can be controlled by some sensors. So this is a good sample of that. Uh, this is Android Things robot that figure out where is the ball and follow this ball. Uh, and uh, you can make your own remote control for your Sonos player or any other hardware that have API. For example, Sonos player is not that great in terms of remote controlling. You need app. Or you don't have any other choice. You cannot create. You, you cannot buy some remote control. But you can build your own self that play music that you like. Show it what's playing right now and control it remotely. Why not? It's pretty cool to have some <laughs> hobby making some controllers. And this is based on Android things. So as Android developer, it's pretty fa it's pretty easy to you to make connection to API to Sonos because you know how to do it and you can build not a phone application but hardware application that's pretty cool uh, uh, one more sample yep so this is more complex sample it uses android things devices you see and android things device control your fan using the relay uh, and you can speak to google home to and register your Android Things device as a controller in smart home and Google Home will understand, like turn on fan and it understands that this Android Things is a fan controller and Android Things will turn on or turn off fan and decrease or increase speed of this fan. But you can go further and remove the Google Home from this stack and provide a microphone on top of your Android Things device and it will be controlled by your voice directly. So don't need to have Google Home or Amazon Alexa or any other. So my case, I also have my hobby project. And my case is was at my bed, in my bedroom, the temperature is not that good as I want because my uh, air conditioner unit with sensor is on the other side of the room and uh, it, the temperature on my floor is not uh, on my ceiling is not the same as near my bed so i put the temperature sensor three dollar cost super cheap uh, near my bed it connected to wi-fi into my house and i have android things android things listening for updates from this uh, temperature sensor via wi-fi and uh, make decision should we turn on or turn off air conditioner and which temperature should we set it's sent via wi-fi again to the another cheap two dollar unit command to turn on or turn off air conditioner and using infrared led i send commands to my air conditioner unit and that's how i control it it's it's it's, it's easy idea right so it's a good sample so for interaction with hardware in your home, you don't need to have Android things, but for some computations, for making decisions, it's, it's a good. And also because it's Android, you can use the power of Firebase libraries, and I'm going fuller, and I use Firebase, and uh, sync my settings and state of my temperature in my room and uh, preference settings with my phone. So I control from my home outside of my building, and uh, ask Android things to turn on or turn off air conditioner and provide some kind of speed. Uh, 
there's two more samples of using Android things. This is how you can build your own smart speaker without having this cardboard that I was showed before. So there should be some voice. Yeah? Raspberry Pi, and this is a bit of overkill. It's just a button and two wires connected to two pins on there. You press the button and the wires connect. Uh, microphone, battery, speaker. How can I help? So it works the same as uh, Google Phone. Tell me about my day. Hey, Dan. I hope your day is off to a good start. Thanks for calling. The time is 9.34 a.m. In early it's 52 and mostly cloudy. It'll be raining there today with a forecasted high of 60 and a low of 43. Have a nice day. Radio 1. So yeah, we can play Google Music because so you get it. Uh, and the one more sample, it's also voice controlled robot, and okay. even, and even with the Microsoft Xbox Kinect uh, image recognition hardware, but connect to Android things with, on top of with the uh, Android Assistant. Google well. Assistant. Turn left. Okay, turn left. Pretty amazing, right? Okay, so Google. you can build it by yourself and you don't need turn to right. learn some new languages only with just Java, Android. Okay, turn right. Super cool. Yeah, so that's it. This is the Android things. Uh, you can learn more at Google IoT developers community. Obviously, the most of cases are covered in the Android things official documentation. It's pretty good. Uh, you no know, matter is it in release or not, Google always provides good documentation. And Android things SDK already available. And even for Raspberry Pi, as I understand, there, as I said, there's a uh, firmware updates. You can install it using for free Google Cloud Console to update your devices remotely and prototype your devices. So this, what about Android things? If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you.